It is hard to believe that some 460 years after Copernicus posited the heliocentric model and some 400 years after Galileo Galilei hammered the nails into the Ptolemaic model's coffin that there are people who would seriously suggest a stationary fixed Earth with the other planets, the sun, the stars and heck the entire universe in neat lockstep around it. It's perhaps even harder to fathom quite why I'd be drawn towards this or why I'd make this video, but here I am. The person I'm responding to here is Funny Boy 100, an apparently genuine biblical literalist who holds that the Earth is stationary. I'll mainly be responding to his claim that the Earth does not rotate, though we will touch on the motion of the Earth about the Sun later. And I wish to offer a rebuttal to this that centres mainly around one effect the Coriolis effect, which I will explain briefly to the best of my ability, and then offer three real-world examples, two from nature and one from experiment, which are inexplicable in an irrotational Earth model. The primary text used for this is Planetary Sciences by De Pata and Sauer. The Coriolis effect is the name for the deflection of the winds by the rotation of a planet. Even the Coriolis effect, the spin of the Earth comes into play. In a basic sense, winds flow from a high pressure regions to low pressure regions, seeking pressure balance, but because the Earth rotates, these winds cannot follow a straight path, but rather are deflected. On Earth, this means that winds moving towards the equator in the northern hemisphere are deflected to their right, and winds moving towards the equator in the southern hemisphere are deflected to their left. This means that large low pressure weather systems rotate anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere and vice versa for high pressure systems. In an irrotational earth model there is no way to account for this rotational rule for cyclones and anticyclones. There's no reason for them to rotate in this rigidly defined manner. A second natural phenomenon stemming from the Coriolis effect is with regards to Hadley cell circulation. On an irrotational or slowly rotating planet such as Venus, there is only one Hadley cell per hemisphere, but on rotational bodies, the Coriolis effect divides this circulation pattern. On Earth, there are three such cells, the Hadley cell, the feral cell, and the polar cell. Again, in an irrotational Earth model, there is no way to account for this cell division. The experimental phenomenon is, of course, pendulum. Using a large pendulum, French scientist Léon Foucault showed that the pendulum was deflected from its path and processed. At either axial pole, the pendulum would process fully once every 24 hours, while at the equator, there will be no precession. Again, this is seemingly inexplicable in an irrotational Earth model. For his part, Fernie Boy has made a vague attempt at dealing with Foucault's pendulum. If I wanted to deal with all the claims in that video, I'd have to do so in another video, so I'll just go over the basic outline. Fernie Boy is claiming the rotation of the universe about the Earth could impart a force on the Earth that explains the precession of Foucault's pendulum. No mechanism is proffered, no calculations are given, and its constant referral to swirling patterns in weather suggests to me that the Coriolis effect is alien to him. The precession of the pendulum is a result of the Coriolis force, which is the same force that affects the rotation of large weather patterns. The Coriolis effect is a direct result of the Earth spinning. Literally, the equation for it has an angular velocity term. So there are three manifestations of the Coriolis effect that need to be explained, and he appears to explain these things nowhere. Comments are, surprise, surprise, on approval only, and my comments have not been allowed through. Interferometry may be used to calculate the angular velocity of Earth. This work was first carried out in 1926 by Albert Michelson, Henry Gale and Fred Pearson using a large Sagniac interferometer as described in their paper, the effect of the Earth's rotation on the velocity of light. This showed a shift in fringe pattern caused by the rotation of Earth, producing a result that was very close to the expected shift. Again, that there is any shift is sufficient to show that the Earth is not irrotational, but that they got so close to the expected value using 1926 equipment is the icing on the cake. A further issue is that there shouldn't be a difference between solar and sidereal day if the Earth doesn't move, but there is such differences, there's about a four minute difference. There is also the issue of parallax. Parallax is the apparent shift in position ostensibly caused by the movement of the Earth around the Sun. The larger the shift, the closer the object. In a fixed Earth, there should be no parallax shift because the celestial sphere moves rather than the Earth moving. But we observe parallax for pretty much every object. 
Parallax is also important with respect to measuring the distance to objects with the satellite Hipparchus accurate down to about 0.01 arc seconds or 13,600,000th of a degree. Hipparchus can make accurate readings to about 1,600 light years. This is an issue. With the speed of light at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, there is a limit to the size of a sphere that rotates in 24 hours. Such a sphere is limited to a radius of about 4 trillion meters. This is equivalent to 27.5 astronomical units. But objects are measurably further away. Again, how would this work? I mean, at 27.5 astronomical units, even Neptune ends up being superluminal. What do I expect will happen? nothing. He has repeatedly not approved my comments critical of his ideas and continues to stop them from getting through. I humbly request that you send this video to Fanny Boy 100 but I expect nothing to come of it. He's entrenched. He'll continue the same as before. I honestly doubt whether he'll even watch this video but it exists now which is somehow something. Thanks for watching and take care.